Да, заходи. Good afternoon. I think we are live and we can start. My name is Adelbert Jans. I work for the European Commission and specifically on the new European Bauhaus. And it is my great, great pleasure to welcome our now over 300 participants to this uh, launch of the capacity building um, program on the reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, we are your hosts today with Margot Didichenko, who's an architect from Ukraine. Hello, Margot. And uh, we will maybe start with Margot explaining briefly how to make sure that you can listen in both English and in Ukrainian. Margot? Yes, welcome everybody. I'm Margot Didichenko, and today we're going to work with simultaneous interpretation. So in order for you to hear this event in Ukrainian, please, at the bottom of the screen, uh, check the uh, globe icon interpretation and choose Ukrainian. If you want to listen to English, you would have to choose English and stay in the channel that you have chosen. Thank you very much, Margot. This is uh, this is very helpful. And uh, let me maybe start by, uh, first of all, thanking everyone for joining us. We have some very, uh, very good speakers today, but especially I would like to express gratitude to all the Ukrainian mayors and uh, different stakeholders from the Hromadas who are taking from their very, very valuable time to, to join us today. And um, we really hope that this will be extremely valuable for you and only a start of something that you will find very useful in your work. Uh, I would also like to say that we chose the particular Zoom format because uh, we have to deal with uh, very difficult circumstances. We need to make sure that everyone can participate in today's event, uh, even if there are any unforeseen circumstances due to the ongoing invasion. And we do have uh, colleagues joining from all over uh, Europe, and that includes also from all over Ukraine. So we need to be, uh, we need to be ready for that. And uh, specifically to talk a little bit about how we will um, deal with the technical issues. Again, I'm counting on Margot to explain how uh, the system works. Right. Today, we will have several stages in our work. We want not only to tell you about our plans, but uh, to learn about your opinions and so please use such tools as chat in order to communicate with us on technical issues. If you understand that you have a problem with sound or interpretation, please write to us quickly. We will also have a small survey that we will start at a certain point. I will then tell you more details about what you will have to do. And also, please use Q&A session to ask questions, to add, put questions to the speakers, to the program. We may not be able to answer every question, but after this webinar, we will send you additional answers to your questions by mail. We are always very happy to see your response. So please collaborate with us. Show us that you're ready to communicate. We will always be happy to hear you. Thanks a lot, Margot. Um, we will now very briefly share the agenda of the of today's event with you, and I will not go through it in in full detail. You will certainly um, see all of uh, all of the different parts as we go forward. But um, what I would just like to say is that. Um, specifically for colleagues joining us from Ukraine and from the municipalities, we know how busy we are and how valuable your time is, um, but bear with us. We think that this event will have some very interesting things for you. For example, uh, we will have speeches from your colleagues or counterparts in the cities of Lyon and Venezia halfway through the event. We will have a questions and answers session with Oksana Kissel from the Covenant of Mayors East, where we will also be able to address some of your questions that you uh, might have. And of course, at the end of the event, we will also be talking for quite a while about the funding opportunities as, uh, that are available to you. So hopefully this will be very, very much uh, worthwhile for you. And we very much hope that you will be able to stay with us 
um, until the very end. And to, to just start us off, um, we will now show a message of welcome from the president of the European Commission, who is very much engaged in this, in this project, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. We will reconstruct Ukraine. We have to do that, and we will do that. And I think it is not only in our interest, it's our moral obligation to do that. But when we are reconstructing Ukraine, of course owned by Ukraine, let's do it in the right way. Let's do it in the spirit of the new European Bauhaus. The new European Bauhaus is an enabler for the European Green Deal. We want to improve the quality of life in cities and rural areas in the European Union and beyond. The new European Bauhaus can serve as a compass for the rebuilding of Ukraine. The new European Bauhaus is the soul of our climate agenda, the European Green Deal. It promotes a sustainable, inclusive and beautiful future in the European Union and beyond its borders in Ukraine. We'll build places that protect our planet, save energy and make people feel good. Putting people first is one of the central tenets of the new European Bauhaus. There are urban planners, engineers, architects fully on board, and the new European Bauhaus concept will inspire them. Our LIFE program will provide the first steps on that. This is seven million for uh, the program to start. So our vision is to turn the destruction of war into opportunities to build a beautiful and healthy future for Ukraine. Yeah. Construction needs to be green, energy efficient, but it must also tackle waste and provide for good water management. We start with three first modules, but we hope that more will follow and that we can build a true cooperation also of Ukrainian and EU architects to bring real change on the ground. Wonderful, inspiring words. And now I'd like to give the floor Alexandra Azarina, the Deputy Minister for Communities, Infrastructure and Recovery. I think we have a problem with her connection allow me to perhaps give the floor to the commissioner commissioner Kyrgyzstankiewicz and then we will give the floor to Alexandra a little later hello and good afternoon uh, so of course it's my pleasure to be to be with you uh, today. Uh, the reconstruction uh, will be long, but it is a road we will travel together. And today we are taking another step down this road as we start to share our expertise. So if we want to move fast, we need to make sure our actions are well structured and coordinated properly. The new European Bauhaus community is doing a great job assessing the situation. The work on the needs assessment in Ukraine is a strong uh, basis uh, we can build on. And that's the base we need before uh, we start the webinars. And of course, we have the live program 
for people who don't know how uh, the program uh, life is the only EU uh, uh, program exclusively dedicated to environment, nature conservation and climate action. It finances support uh, to nature and biodiversity, circular economy, climate mitigation and adaptation and clean energy transition. The overall goal is helping Europe move towards a more modern, resource efficient, climate neutral economy, which is leading the way on the global stage. It helps ensure that this green transition leaves no one behind, while also improving people's health and quality of life and protecting the nature we all depend on. All that makes a natural match between the LIFE program and the new European Bauhaus. It's worth pointing out that the LIFE community and the new European Bauhaus community started working together before the Russian invasion. And that has created a very solid foundation for a coordinated joint effort to support Ukraine. And of course, Ukraine is now a full member of uh, the LIFE community since being associated to the program in June last year. This is opening the door to do more extensive cooperation with Ukrainian partners, and we have to strengthen that cooperation and we advance down the road. The next big step is not very far away. In April, we launch the next LIFE call for proposals that's going to make an important contribution to Phoenix our new initiative, which is created to help on sustainable reconstruction of Ukrainian cities. And for Ukraine, that means three things in particular. First of all, in the framework of uh, the Phoenix initiative, we intend to co-finance two projects to support Ukrainian cities in the area of waste and water. So I warmly invite Ukrainian cities and EU organizations to start lising in these areas and to present proposals. Secondly, we will support a specific project to contribute to the new uh, European Bauhaus in the sector of uh, buildings and construction. So we very uh, much look forward to proposals in that area as well. And the third, and more broadly, there will be a dedicated amount for co-financing projects that contribute to the Bauhaus initiative. And then uh, here too, Ukrainian organizations are very welcome to participate as well. So these trends will all come together. At the end of the year, when we hold a conference on Phoenix, the new European Bauhaus and LIFE, this will be a chance to bring all the relevant organizations together and to launch the projects at a high profile event. Those trends will all be project based, but in fact, the lines of communication will be open all the time. Right now, we are developing policy dialogues in the environment sector between the European Commission and the Ukrainian government. The aim is to support uh, the reconstruction efforts and to involve civil society whenever that's appropriate. There will be policy exchanges on all uh, the main dimension of the reconstruction that includes circular construction, waste management, green public procurement, environmental finance, pollution prevention and control, environmental rule of law, air quality and all the areas where we can help. These are opportunities, a dialogue of course, always takes two sides. So we can uh, we count on your collaboration to make them as successful and as fruitful as possible. And I'm sure that will happen because today I feel that I'm talking to the right people. The people here are best placed to spread the word and present proposal. And this, uh, this path uh, to reconstruction is a path we take together. As I said it already many times, we are together with Ukraine. We will be until uh, with the Ukraine until the war ends and we will rebuild the beauty of Ukraine together. And I look very much forward to the trip and, tra and traveling uh, into in with your company. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner for this inspiring words. I would also like to give the floor now to Alexandra Azarhina, Deputy Minister for Community Development, Development of Territories and Infrastructure of Ukraine. Dear colleagues, friends, it's an honor to talk here and to be part of such ambitious project. Our priority is to make the restoration process inclusive, transparent, and accountable. For sure, our goal is to make sure that the communities will have 
all necessary tools to implement the restoration projects by themselves. And frankly speaking, from our point of view, your project is really helping communities to understand better the planning, the circle economic, the overall approaches. Those tools need to serve to the people in Hromadas, even we sure that with the provision of the proper knowledge and technologies, we will have the best results in the restorations. It will be not only built back better, but it will be also environmentally friendly and with the long-standing standards in accordance with European integration process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for such inspiring words. It's true that these are the processes that the country needs so much and the support that the new European Bauhaus is providing. Together with the European Commission, well, the support is very important, but we would like to get to our future. And I would like to give the floor now to Anna, Anna Bonder, architect, member of parliament of Ukraine, who is dealing with the recovery of Ukraine in particular. Good afternoon, I'm Anna Bodner. I now work as a member of parliament. And this panel is called How Values, Inclusiveness and Aesthetics Can Help Successful Recovery of Ukraine. And I was just thinking about that. I thought that aesthetics can help our communities become more happy because when a person feels bad, one turns to the beauty, to arts, to comfortable aesthetic community space or to good quality architecture. But as regards sustainability and inclusiveness, I had a question of my own because I think that sustainability this is what inclusiveness only can provide. And Ukrainians have shown this in the course of this war. If we had not been consolidated, if we had not united, if we had not shared our pain and our happiness, we wouldn't have survived probably. That's about the subject of this panel. And I would also like to share with you two wonderful pieces of news coming from the parliament, this very fresh piece of news. Yesterday, we had a meeting of the parliamentary committee, our leading committee, that adopted two important decisions. The first one, it uh, introduced the law of Ukraine on public consultation, which speaks about the importance of engaging the citizens of Ukraine to policy development. And the second important decision is the start on the to start a work on the urban construction code of ukraine and here we have certain principles and goals you can see them on the screen this is the code that should become a kind of a package of laws so that we would not be uh we would not know where to look for what information these are all the laws related to urban construction, it's important to find the right balance of interest between all the stakeholders, the residents, experts, professionals, central government, developers, all the other stakeholders participating in the process. We also hope that this uh, uh, tool will, will document, will get us closer to the best European practices. So when Ukraine joins the European Union, it would not have to change its laws. And one of the important uh, objectives for this code is to develop urban construction as regards recovery, rebuilding, reconstruction, so that our cities would be safe, clean, environmentally safe and beautiful. What is important is how we will develop it. Here you can see some the first stage of the development as you see in red color you see public consultations public discussions so this is a kind of a public check up of every step in the code development we will start with a huge public discussion within which we will talk about problems there will be the educational process i hope that the international experts will share their experience about how urban construction is building in their country so we could see ukraine before 2011, after 2011, the Ukraine of the future, what kind of uh, social consensus we will all find. And after that, we will develop the concept that will also be discussed, and I hope it will be approved by the committee. 
and only after that we will start developing the draft law as such and i hope we will also discuss it at the parliament if we still have martial law we will have a public discussion if the martial law is lifted we will have the parliamentary hearing and at this at that stage at the second stage we will start working with it as with the draft law it will be a long process we think it will take us a year and a half or two years but we want to make it as inclusive as possible because this is what will make it sustainable thank you very much thank you very very much for these uh for this very important and useful news um, and continuing now on the uh, on the topic of how can uh, all these new european bauhaus values uh, help and guide in successful reconstruction of Ukraine. Um, I will be very happy to give the floor to Volker Treffers, who is a um, an architect and urbanist from uh, the Netherlands. Please go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, for this moment, I'm I'm feeling humble and proud to be here. I've, I've been working for years in Ukraine and always trying to support. Uh, municipalities to develop strong visions for their cities together with their citizens and the aim was to build capacity in the field of urban planning and design and now this is even more important let me go back to march 2022 one year ago just two weeks after the full-scale invasion a group of ukrainian and international urban planners architects and researchers started coming together talking about the huge challenges Ukraine will have after the war. Not much later, Roskvit was founded. Roskvit supports municipalities in Ukraine to handle these challenges. We are a Ukrainian NGO with 90 experts from Ukraine and abroad. And we concluded that one of the main focuses should be education to build capacity on municipality level. Roskvit supports in developing city strategies related to the topics of the damages, like the urgent housing for IDPs, the dropped economy, and the perspective of joining the EU, which has been talked about a lot already today. We support with our knowledge of architecture, urban design, management, housing, sustainability, energy, mobility, culture, and memory. But the most difficult Called, and maybe most important thing is to integrate all this, to integrate all these different layers of city planning, of sustainable and ecological challenges and city sp citizens' perspectives, and to combine the short-term recovery needs and the long-term quality in this. And this is not easy. It's not easy, especially when you're missing a lot of team members, especially when you're also responsible for repairing damages caused by the missiles and tanks, and especially when you have to concentrate on working when the war is all around you, in air alarms, smartphones, and in all conversations. We are now working on large-scale projects with Mariupol, Zaporizhia, Bucha, Rivna, and Kiev Oblast, and many smaller projects in other Oblasts and Romadas. All of these cities and villages have their own challenges and questions about housing, land use, safety, economy, funding, transparency. And the Roskvit members will implement this knowledge that we gain here in the webinars modules that are to come. And we hope that this will lead to more knowledge around the country about urban planning and building and everything related, and therefore to a bright future of our beautiful Ukraine. Thank you, Fulco. It's true that our organization is working in this area, and we are very interested in joining efforts with our colleagues, with different colleagues, experts, in order to spread the knowledge and the best practices that the European Union has. So I would like to give the floor now to representatives of the new European Bauhauses. Salem de Tron to tell us more about how the values and the practices of the new European Bauhaus can become the basis for the future recovery of Ukraine. Thank you very much, Margo, and good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I am pleased to join you to say a few more words about the new European Bauhaus. 
and especially about a tool that we recently published called the Compass. Um, so as you have seen in the introductory video, um, the I'm trying to share the right screen. Um, okay. Um, sorry about this. Okay, I will stop sharing for now. Sorry. Uh, yeah, as you have seen in the introductory video, the New European Bauhaus Initiative promotes um, projects that are not only environmentally sustainable, but also work towards social inclusion, leaving no one behind, and ensure a real quality of life for people. On top of this, the initiative encourages certain ways of working. For example, working together across sectors and disciplines or involving the citizens through participatory processes. And in order to help everyone apply those values and working principles to concrete projects, whether they are services, buildings or city plans, we developed the new European Bauhaus Compass. The Compass is a guiding tool a handbook that uh, offers um, a first common definition for the new European Bios values and working principles. Then it breaks them down into different levels of ambition, which show possible ways to strengthen a project in making it more sustainable, more inclusive, and so on. Um, and um, share the screen again. Yes, here you see um, the handbook does not prescribe um, specific solutions. Instead, it uses examples and guiding questions to give ideas and offer new perspective. And you have here on the right different uh, concept analyzed through the lenses of the new European Bauhaus Compass. And as you can see, the logo, this tricolor rose evolves it is more or less complete and colorful, and it helps visualize in which value or principle a project already shows a lot of ambition and where on the contrary, there would be space for development. Now, the best way to um, understand how the Compass can support projects and decision makers is to see it applied to a specific concept. For example, um, we can look at Corso Zalesi, a project that takes place in a small municipality of less than 2,000 inhabitants in Slovakia, along the bank of the Little Danube River. Ten years ago, a group of inhabitants decided to clear part of the village's waterfront, which had been neglected for many years and was used as a landfill. This first action started a process of revitalization revitalization of the riverbank and brought together architects, designers, inhabitants, and environmental activists. Together, they further cleaned the waterfront and designed and built a wooden pier, a harbor, and a small amphitheater for the village's cultural and social activities. And when we apply the lenses of the new European Bauhaus to this project, we see that the working principle that guided its implementation are very strong especially if we think of the participation of inhabitants. They gave the first impulsion, they took decisions, and they kept taking care of the project. We also notice the strong ambition to create beautiful spaces and qualitative experience for users. The new public spaces dialogue with the natural environment, they bring together visitors and locals, and they make people feel good about the place they live in. Now, if we look at environmental sustainability, for example, this project reaches only the first step, which is protecting the natural environment. So we can imagine that in future development, the community integrates all the principles of circularity and regeneration to the project. For example, in reflecting about how the wood they use is sourced or how it could be reused. But overall, Corso Salesi, is what we can call a new European Bauhaus project because it addresses all these axes, even with smaller first steps. Because we believe that a project that adopts this integrated approach that gives equal importance to all values and principle can really make a different difference and help change our societies. So as you can see, the Compass is 
not a technical assessment framework with strict criteria. It is meant to be inspirational, to highlight strength and show how a project can evolve. And as the new European Bauhaus is uh, welcoming more and more Ukrainian partners and gathering inspiring examples from the country, we hope that this tool can accompany and serve your work in carrying and assessing projects in the reconstruction process. We will have a presentation of the Compass in Ukrainian available on the EU Academy platform. And of course, we, if, we have, if you have any question, you should never hesitate to reach out to us. We will always do our best to help. Thank you. Thank you very much for such an inspired story. You can see in the chat the document as such, the uh, instrument, and uh, she said that soon you're, there's going to be a presentation of it in Ukrainian, and it can really help us as a kind of a guideline in how to rebuild Ukraine and how to comply with those principles. And now we would like to cooperate a little bit with you, with the participants. So I will now start a short survey. Uh, it actually has only two questions, this poll. So we can see at once how you will respond. What is interesting for us is your area, your field of work, where exactly you work, and also what you think which areas and which subjects should be should require better competences which are the areas that we should develop first and foremost for a successful recover of ukraine and the first while answering the first question you can uh, choose as many questions as you want and while answering the second question please choose up to five options Well, I think that while everyone is uh, getting ready to answer, I can actually read out some of the options and uh, some of our results. So, if we talk about the uh, field of your work, most probably you uh, participate in some uh, urban planning areas or urban construction if not, maybe you're doing land management, mobility, transportation, environment, or spatial development, or maybe community management, or institutional development and partnership, policy making, maybe economic development and investment, or social development or culture. Perhaps you represent the student community or research community so please you can then check the answer other and as regards the areas that you think will have to be developed uh, first and foremost as a priority we have identified 10 blocks because we have some technical limitations in this poll and those uh, 10 units they include uh, fundraising, financial management, economic development, investment attractiveness of the communities, engaging communities and stakeholders into partnerships, developing cooperation between uh, different communities. These are approaches to circular economy, to sustainable development, energy efficiency, energy autonomy, spatial development, and physical reconstruction sustainable mobility, reconstruction of transport infrastructure, as well as logistics, recovery of social infrastructure, development of social area, so solving social problems, housing construction, housing management, as well as uh, uh, developing culture and heritage. And the last Thing that includes many things is strategic territorial development with account of the sustainable development requirements, the Green Deal and post-war challenges. 
більша половина учасників відповіла на опитування, і більшість учасників, 43%, я не впевнена, чи ви всі бачите результати. I'm not sure whether you can see the results. Чи ви бачите результати? Can you see results or not? Yeah. Let's see. Unfortunately, I cannot show them to you. They cannot be broadcasted, but I can tell. 43% of our participants belong to architecture, urban planning, and construction. Then we have the land management and institutional development and partnership are equal. We have 34% of people who are linked with economic development and investment, and also we have representatives of culture, social development, and the governance and policy making, mobility and transport, and also the land management. If we speak about the spheres, it's interesting that we do not have the leaders but we have a number of answers which receive more than 50 percent yes you can see the results of our poll and you can have a look with the outcomes of the participants poll so you can see them on your screen an interesting fact is that some received more than 50 percent there are 500 participants right now, and the strategic development is a very important and one of the priorities, the same as urban development and the sustainable development and circular economy are of huge importance, as well as partnership with the, the communities. So we can say for sure that the main aspects, which become the building blocks of the new Bauhaus, which are the basics of the sustainable goals, they are very topical for us right now. So we are moving in the right direction and we believe that this program, and not only this program, will allow us to implement all our plans and our aspirations for a better future. I think that now I would like to suggest to switch to the presentation of the partners who are involved in this program. So please, we have the video presentations. Roskrit is a coalition of experts of the urbanist architecture in uh, after the war time in the economy, in the mobility, in the history of culture, and everything linked to the urban development. To our mind, it's of quite important to increase the capacity of the municipalities in order to create the potential to rebuild and reconstruct Ukraine at the local level. It will allow the local communities to influence on their own future. And that's the basics of all the reconstruction of the whole country. Good afternoon, dear participants. I'm Roman Puchko, I'm the co-founder uh, of the organization which is dealing with the circular economy. What it means for the cities and communities? It's about the resources economy. 
are from the models, from the life of the products and about the whole system of the life cycle out in the open and those systems, how to optimize this, how to make it more efficient. That's why as soon as the new European Bauhaus was created, we were very involved in this and became partners because it reflects our principles, our values, and also the aesthetics and the sustainable goals. And there is a huge need in reconstruction of our cities and communities, and we believe that those principles will be in the focus. And we would like to help our cities and communities in implementing of the Green Deal and of other aspects. So well, we are awaiting for a very fruitful cooperation. Oh, Kalina became a symbol of the resistance of Ukraine for the freedom, the system, for the willingness and in our victory. The new Bauhaus is a symbol of the joint effort of Europe to reconstruct Ukraine. We are happy to become the partners of the new Bauhaus. It will help the Ukrainians to reconstruct the cities in a greener way, uh, in a more sustainable way. The green reconstruction of Ukraine it's not only the economic development, it's not only the circular economy, but it's also our country in The small initiatives change the world. And Since the very beginning also bring of the war to started by Russia in Ukraine, Architects Council of Europe had demonstrated support and solidarity with Ukrainian professionals, architects and citizens. Apart from sending a letter of support to Ukrainian colleagues architects, Architects Council of Europe had established a special task force group called Solidarity with Ukraine. The aim of this task force group is to initiate support and coordinate efforts and initiatives dedicated to help to reconstruct Ukraine. During the recent years, Architects Council of Europe, together with Ukrainian architect societies, had been active in various fields. For example, addressing and discussing with Ukrainian and European politicians, promoting quality design processes in Ukraine, and collecting and disseminating information about various different initiatives for Ukraine initiated in European countries. In the NEBLAB Ukraine, Architects Council of Europe is preaching for implementation of new European Bauhaus principles in the processes of the rebuilding of Ukraine. Ukraine needs fair partnership and quality-oriented design processes that are indispensable for sustainable, democratic and exemplary reconstruction of the country. So the series of the webinars is a very concrete action promising so much needed, relevant and empowering knowledge and ACE is happy to contribute to the program with a professional expertise. Since the invasion last year, we got a clear message from our new European Bauhaus community that said, you have to do something. So as a first action, our community showed its strength by connecting to each other and putting in place concrete solutions to improve living conditions of displaced Ukrainians. And at the same time, our rebuilding experts for many other war situations expressed their concerns. Any shorter needs have long-term implications. So for the last nine months, we have been working intensively together with our partners Roskvit, Rethink, Covenant of Mayors East and Architect Council of Europe to come up with actions that would help on short term, but also give guidance to implement sustainable, inclusive and beautiful actions for the future of Ukraine. And this is, of course, just the beginning of our journey. We invite you all to join. Yes, of course, we are open to have the experts joining our capacity and also the communities which are interested in development. That's why we are trying uh, to answer the questions which we have in a Q&A. And also we would like to say that now we will have 
a panel discussion, after which we will have an interaction with you with open questions about how are the biggest challenges for you, in your opinion, challenges to your communities in the future, and which is the biggest challenge in other after war reconstruction. You see, please think about this question and within the next three presentations, please write your answers in the chat and we will work with them. And now I would like to invite to share the experience of Ukraine and the EU and starting with the Ukraine, because we are here for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Mustafa Masinayev, the head of the Agency for Reconstruction and Development of Infrastructure of Ukraine. Please, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, greetings to all meeting participants and experts. Uh, so uh, I really was honored to be appointed to the head of the Agency for Restoration of Ukraine just two months ago. And for previously, I worked with the team of Minister of, Infra uh, Ministry of Infrastructure, which now became Ministry of uh, Regional Development. And um, so the Reconstruction Agency has been created for the rapid, transparent and uh, effective implementation of restoration projects. And uh, I, I know that there are many uh, rumors, there are many uh, kind of uh, uh, concerns about uh, creating of the agency and uh, many people guessing what we are doing. Uh, so I will try to explain what we're doing for this moment. Uh, the main uh, role of our agency, it will be being partner for all kind of stakeholders which needs uh, to restore or uh, recover their facilities. I'm talking about local authorities, first of all, and I'm talking about central level agencies. Uh, the main uh, scope of our work, of course, is critical infrastructure. It is energy infrastructure, housing, utilities, and et cetera. But very important uh, part of our activity is that uh, actually we are real partners. So we are not defining the needs of the regions. We are not creating plans for them. We are not creating some regulation for them. We are just doing uh, the job they need to be done because they don't have capacity. And when I'm saying capacity, I'm not talking only about money or I'm not talking only about possibility. I'm talking, first of all, about expertise and people on the ground who can develop this kind of projects for this moment of our history. Uh, and first of all, I'm talking about uh, those regions. We are now talking with about 11 regions which are along the front line, which was affected mostly by Russian aggression. And uh, for this moment, it is obvious that um, we are not talking about recovery and restoration uh, in sense of uh, usually we use these words because we are talking about survival stage and we are talking about those projects which can help people uh, to survive now. And so first of all, we are doing those issues which has um, the biggest impact on the territory and the people who are living in this territory. And of course, uh, after war, I think uh, after victory, uh, each, this approach will be changed uh, tremendously because first of all, we are waiting for detailed plans of the regions and master plans over territories, which will help us to define what kind of facilities should be restored and which way it should be done. Because we also understand that there are many problems which can be solved uh, during restoration. And first of all, of course, we are talking about different, um, different, different, uh, standards and different modernization uh, and technologies. So by leveraging the experience and uh, expertise gained over the past years, including during the, the last war, uh, we are now creating more powerful and capable project implementer that applies uh, the best international standards and practices. Of course, these standards and practices can be used now, but mostly I, I hope all of us are aware about that and, and we are consciously understand that not everything which we are doing now uh, possible to do the best way. For example, we have some uh, facilities which should be at least restored for short term because people need them now, but in future then sh they, they can be and should be modernized. 
especially when I'm talking about heating, about talking water supply system and uh, big grids. So the agency will become a reliable partner and assistant in the implementation of uh, restoration projects, primarily for local communities and municipalities, uh, as well as for the state agency of infrastructure projects and uh, communities. And for the success uh, of massive restoration effort, the initiative of regions and communities is crucial because no one knows better than they uh, do what needs to be restored urgently. Uh, the reconstruction agency as a project implementer on behalf of the state is interested in, uh, uh, in informing comprehensive restoration concept among, among communities. And today we, we, we need to implement the best world standards. It is obvious and practices of, uh, first of all, of urban development based on energy efficiency, inclusiveness, ecologic, uh, ecological standards and uh, comfort for residents. And the principles of a new European initiative, new uh, European Bauhaus uh, created with the, within the framework of the European Green Deal include sustainable development uh, aesthetic and inclusiveness to improve the quality of life in communities. We actually met with some of our colleagues who were here on panel before, and we discussed all this approach, how we can be done. And, uh, and then we understand that it's something unavoidable. And uh, I saw many materials about New by House. Believe me, it's much more beautiful than we have now and much more uh, attractive. I understand that for me, it's kind of dream to have these kind of facilities in some cities which are now totally destroyed or damaged, but we should go to these standards. And we appreciate that new European Bauhaus uh, is already providing assistance to the state agency for, uh, for infrastructure projects uh, in training, uh, even uh, in, in planning and uh, financing projects that uh, adhere to the principles of the European initiative. Uh, New European Bauhaus has already supported a number of projects in Ukraine, including the construction of storage facilities, uh, modular buildings, housing and public buildings. And currently uh, it is conducting technical and uh, economical research on uh, circular construction projects and preparing to implement pilot projects, including, as I remember in Mykolaiv, uh, some projects were done in Bucha, in Rivne and, 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 and in Zaporizhia. So in informational and educational support for local self-government bodies and communities from a new European Bauhaus is, is crucial. Uh, I will just tell you one very small uh, uh, example. Now we gathered information from 11 uh, territories on the ground. Uh, we are in deep connection with the local authorities. So we deliver, we, we received almost 11,000, uh, 10,000 uh, inquiries of uh, damaged facilities. But from these uh, 10,000, there are very mm, tiny uh, amount of uh, projects has uh, even design documentation. I'm not talking about something which can be modernized or, or, or something which can be used in sense of uh, ecological standards and et cetera. So this uh, capacity of local authority, it's crucial. So we will be very supportive in all your efforts, which you can do on the ground with the people on the ground. Of course, I think it is um, quite uh, optimistic to wait or to expect these kind of trainings, for example, in Kherson, uh, which is just was occupied several months ago and they don't have even uh, full fledged administration. But from the other side, I think we should be prepared on that. And this kind of trainings, I think it's it's very important. Uh, so, and of course, from my behalf of my team and behalf of all our infrastructural team of ministries also, I'm grateful to you and expressing gratitude to the European Commission and um, to all experts who have jointly developed uh, this course in, for representative of the Ukrainian communities who will be involved in the reconstruction processes based on the principles of the new Bauhaus. Yeah, and uh, from my side, you will always will find um, partner and reliable partner, transparent partner who will be support your efforts on the ground, helping our communities to be more strong. 
and to be more uh, capable to deliver results. Thank you very much for this comprehensive conversation and for all your efforts, especially at these times. Believe me, for many of us, uh, your support, uh, it's, it's additional drop of hope to our hearts that everything will be okay and someday we will be able to restore our country by new standards. Thank you very, very much, uh, Mr. Nayem. And with uh, your speech, we've entered into a, um, a, se a second phase of this event where we're really going more into depth on um, all the different uh, things that um, stakeholders from municipalities can be interested in, um, looking into real possibilities that they uh, that they have and inspiration from uh, from different sides as to how to go about the, the re reconstruction work that they have to do. And part of the strength of the um, capacity building project that we're launching is not only to be able to bring together uh, all the relevant stakeholders from uh, Ukraine, but also uh, obviously to share experiences from um, different other places in Europe. And in this vein, uh, we are fortunate to have with us uh, the mayor of the third biggest city in France, of uh, Lyon, um, Mr. Grigory Doucet. Uh, to who I have the pleasure of giving the floor now to share experiences from that side of Europe. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Okay, perfect. First of all, I, I want to, to share my greetings with, uh, with everybody and, and thank the, the presidents of the European Commission and, and the commissioners, of course, and Eurocities as well, to allow me to, to say a few words, to share a few words with, with you today. Um, let me also start by by reminding that since the beginning of the war, uh, our hearts have been beating with the Ukrainian ones. And that, of course, uh, I want to remind that our commitment to the Ukrainian victory within uh, the international recognized border is, of course, uh, full. Um, our city, like many other cities in, uh, in Europe, actually, uh, is uh, fully uh, involved in the process of mobilizing uh, its expertise and, and civil servants uh, to help the reconstruction process uh, of Ukraine, especially uh, in few fields like, for instance, sustainable mobility, green public spaces or schools, uh, sustainable food, thermal insulation, or, or even uh, local health uh, policies. Just to, to give you an example, um, in Lyon, uh, since the beginning of uh, my mandate, we have been uh, creating 32 green schoolyards uh, in order to address uh, the consequences of uh, global warming in, in our school. So this is the kind of expertise that actually we can share with, uh, with Ukrainian municipalities to, uh, uh, to actually being also prepared not only to be to, for reconstruction, but also uh, to address uh, global warming uh, issues. Uh, by the way, uh, our participation, like uh, uh, 99 other uh, uh, European, uh, European cities, yeah, our participation to the 100 Climate Neutral and Smart Cities uh, mission of, Europe, of the European Union is a, is a guarantee that uh, the, the support that we can provide uh, can contribute to, uh, to Ukraine on the, on the road to uh, carbon neutrality, which is also uh, an objective that we that we need to share uh, all of us. Uh, just in, in brief and, and uh, as a conclusion, let me just tell you that uh, uh, on behalf uh, of my of my colleagues from uh, many other uh, European cities, it's, we we consider that it's it's an honor to uh, help Ukraine, uh, which is uh, bravely defending our common democratic values. Thank you. I was asked to be quite brief, so I make it short. <laughs> Thank you a lot, Gregory. We have a very intense schedule. That's why we asked all the speakers to be very brief. And we are very brief. And we are very thankful that we are on time on our agenda. I would like to pass the floor to Oksana Kisil. 
I am reminding about the question and your answers in the chat, Oksana, I'm passing the floor to you. Dear colleagues from uh, the Council of Mayors, I'm greeting you. Thank you for your participation. I was trying to summarize the answers uh, which you provided in the chat on our main questions. So what are the main challenge in the after war reconstruction in your work? And one of the challenges is the number, a huge number of citizens lost uh, their housing and uh, also that a lot of people are not uh, willing to come back and to reconstruct their houses. So as we can see, one of the topical issues, uh, that's the local development of economy and creation of working places. Of course, that will be a preparatory uh, to the reconstruction and also to the reconstruction of buildings. And also uh, uh, some people are indicating uh, the development of uh, tourism and other communities should consider the most beneficial economic development area and how to bring back uh, their citizens, uh, their local, to their community. Another challenge that the strategic planning of, uh, uh, which should be uh, attracting the investors, but the small cities are in the east of Ukraine or in the south uh, of Ukraine, and uh, they can be less attractive than Bucha or Ukin, which are close to Kiev. I agree that, uh, we should pay attention uh, to uh, the small community, which should become uh, the centers of uh, local economy and uh, to support uh, the uh, Bauhaus project, the new initiative, and it will help uh, the communities to find the solutions which should be of the strategic planning, not uh, not to reconstruct and to plan, but uh, to return the local economy. I agree that the government should focus especially on the smaller communities in the eastern or southern part of Ukraine. And we see in it a possibility for our close cooperation. Yet another challenge that I would like to mention is uh, public data on the situation with the infrastructure of social services in different regions of Ukraine. Many participants of the platform are emphasizing that this data should be open. We have to understand what the situation is in every community for all of the country. The data should be transparent, what kind of damage we have. But many participants have said that we should really have transparent plans for community recovery and the communities have to understand how the government donors international financial organizations will support them as i was preparing for this session of q a as part of the covenant of mayors i asked several mayors says what they think 90 percent of the mayors said that we should need more financial instruments and mechanisms because it will not be enough to have just donor support and grants in order to rebuild ukraine and to keep moving toward the european union in view of all the challenges we have that's why we would need private public partnerships we would need investments from private businesses we would need more programs for inter international financial institutions for small and medium-sized cities and towns that require this funding and that can become reliable partners for the financial institutions and if i may margo maybe we should listen to one community a community that perhaps can give us some new ideas and i see that we have pervomysk in kharkiv Oblast Anton Orekhov, the first deputy mayor, is with us now. Can we give him the microphone, please? Anton? Yes, Anton already has access to the microphone. Please turn on your microphone and join us. 
and I will offer some comments for Mikolai of Kharkiv and Kherson. We will definitely rebuild you. You are big cities. You are already interested, interesting for the donors and uh, IFIs and technical assistance projects. It's just that there have been different approaches to big cities and smaller towns, but big cities will definitely be rebuilt. Anton, welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for giving me a chance to share our opinions about the reconstruction of Ukraine. Definitely that we have all now reviewed our approaches and the needs because of the challenges of this big war. And clearly these are such challenges, uh, safety, security, and uh, the need to ensure sustainable development of this urban infrastructure and uh, make it possible that the services are provided in our communities despite the war. And that's perhaps the biggest challenge we're facing. We do understand that uh, while planning the policies for our and our next plans, we will definitely look at all of them through the prism of safety, of future hostilities. We understand that our world would not be what it used to be before, and that's how we're assessing it through this prism. Now, what we see as the primary needs. First of all, we hope to have more sustainable local infrastructure by upgrading it, by introducing some new sustainable solutions. That's a possibility to have a distributed generation, small power generation, uh, thanks to co-generation. For example, we have, we believe that we have good chances for it, but we need some financial instruments that will be accessible to further introduce such instruments in our territories. Well, of course, some things that we already had in the past, the reducing the types of fuel that we use. And because if we're talking about energy efficient projects, and uh, therefore our understanding that uh, generally our country will have less dependence. And the recovery of local generation, thanks to local sources, thanks to all types of uh, fuel, uh, fossil fuel, but thanks to other types of fuel. And of course, all those projects are impossible without funding uh, receiving from large infrastructural projects and our partners from the European Union. We hope that we will get that, but we will develop our policies in this way, as I have explained described. Thank you, Anton. It's an important comment that without people who have been properly trained, we would definitely not be able to rebuild Ukraine with good quality. So people come first. And this training component of Bauhaus will help us increase institutional capacities of the communities and plan and implement large scale projects that will help make our communities greener more inclusive and more friendly. Thank you, Margot. The floor goes to you. Right. And I think that with this comment, we can proceed to a more practical part and uh, discuss uh, the program. The program that we are presenting today that is starting now, which is the introduction to the capacity building program for reconstruction of Ukraine. Today, we will present to, to you together with the other curators. The program consists of three thematic modules that uh, can uh, the teams can take separately, teams from municipalities, they can choose one of the modules or 
apply for all the three models, one after the other. Every module has technically the same structure. These are four meetings for webinars with some additional materials and uh, home tasks. And finally, at the end of every module, we're going to have the final session where we will hear the participants make their presentations, their feedback, and a possibility to get your opinions and uh, to, to tell us what you think about uh, this work. Of course, we would like uh, whole teams uh, of municipalities to join, to take up these modules. And I suggest that we now proceed to a presentation of every each of the modules. And I will invite my colleagues, curators, to present them to you. So the first one is organizational preparation for re uh, recovery, and Diana Sitko is going to present it to you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy to see so many participants. So I'm Diana, yes, and I will take care of module number one of our Rosquit coalition we understand that, that reconstruction is a huge challenge the country is facing in general the country and every community too in order to overcome this challenge with uh, effectively and uh, in a sustainable and beautiful way and all of us together we need to understand what skill sets we need and how to develop them. So the first module is going to be the organizational component as we prepare for reconstruction and how to manage reconstruction projects. We will have Ukrainian and European experts who are practitioners at the same time who understand the Ukrainian, the municipal context at the same time as uh, speakers and experts in our modules so we will talk about leadership motivation for the teams in the current situation that our communities uh, find themselves today with all the uncertainty and limited resources we will deal with the issue of project planning and uh, what are the factors that need to be taken into account so that they can be implemented successfully regardless of what the size of your community is and with a good Ukrainian case stories, we will study how to cooperate and to attract the different stakeholders, businesses, the civil society, donors in the process of recovery and reconstruction and how to engage the community, residents. And of course, we will touch upon a painful issue for many communities, financial resources, where to look for them, what one needs to have for that, we will talk to financial institutions or donors. These webinars will be useful for any type of managers of local authorities, local communities, from deputy mayors to heads of departments, very different departments, and project managers of municipal levels and organizations that will be engaged in development projects in Ukraine. What will you be able to get after you take up a module? Well, again, uh, despite the certainty, uncertainty and limited resources that Ukrainian communities have. On the one hand, you would better understand how to motivate your teams with Ukrainian examples. You would have knowledge as to what to take into account, how to plan and evaluate the projects and how they affect the life of the communities, how to attract to engage stakeholders into the process of reconstruction and community members some clues as to where to look funds for the projects how to do that and some ukrainian and european examples of uh, uh, complex project management uh, related to recovery as such so please join us i'm deaf i'm sure it will be interesting for all of you thank you Thank you, Diana. And I invite now the curator of module number two, Roman Puchko. Thank you. Thank you, Margot. 
Well, of course, we all understand that in today's situation, the environmental aspects and sustainability are not a priority number one in the process of reconstruction, but we are optimists. And uh, we should not close our eyes to this aspect because the green agenda is the basis of the strategic development of the European Union and we're trying to actively integrate with it. So this module primarily is about linking the recovery of our cities and communities with the European Green Deal and the environmental agenda, the green agenda, but thanks to circular economy. I want to emphasize that sustainability within the context of the new European Bauhaus means primarily the environmental sustainability, because it's very important for inclusiveness, for comfort of the city of residents, for rational use of the resources, so that we can live within the planetary resources and trying not to violate them. That's why circular economy is an instrument to reach climatic neutrality and environmental uh, success. It's a new concept, not only for Ukraine, for all of the world. The European Union is a leader in developing this direction of work, but the faster we understand it, the faster we start implementing it, the easier it will be for us to engage resources, Western resources, first and foremost, to recover and rebuild ourselves based on the new Bauhaus principles. Here you see the number of the webinars. I'm not going to quote it because you will get those presentations after this event. You'll be able to review it all to maybe even ask some questions. But uh, the first webinar is going to be quite a kind of a broad introduction, introductory webinar. Webinar number two will primarily focus on the waste that uh, is the results of destructions, those millions of ton of uh, concrete and uh, steel. The third would focus on specific technologies and circular design of our cities and construction. And the fourth would be would see the participation of those people who are already implementing circular projects in Ukraine, representing both Western companies implementing them, as well as perhaps the communities that are already implementing such projects so that they can share their experience. Now, who will these webinars be for? Primarily for all people, starting with the mayors, starting with the heads of the territorial communities. Why? Because it's a very strategic thing. It's not only about environment. It's not only about how to plant trees. It's a very comprehensive story. It's strategic and one has to have a good vision of it. That's also important for the heads of the military administrations, their deputies for environment, for economy, heads of departments, heads of municipal, uh, utilities, members of uh, the leading uh, standing committees, members of the initiative groups of citizens, because as we have agreed with colleagues, you do not have to be a civil servant or to work at a local authority to get registered with a model, but you have to participate in the process in your community. What we would get at the end? At the end, we would get knowledge primarily about the principles of circular cities, all different possibilities of circular reconstruction, a good understanding of how to maximize the values as we once again use the remnants of the houses that are just lying on the ground now. We would get effective instruments and good technological solutions, a uh, good understanding about how to include the principles of circular economy and the strategy of urban development. And of course, we will get relevant experience of those circular projects that are already implemented to recover, rebuild Ukrainian communities. I would be very happy to cooperate with all of you. Please join us. Thank you, Roman, for your words of inspiration. And I invite the curator model number three on housing development, I also represent Roskvit, Alexander Anisimov. Greetings to everybody. I hope you can hear me. I'm very happy to be with you here today. I'm happy to see so many communities joining us today. 
we are working in our team on studying Ukrainian uh, housing construction and those models that can work in Ukraine for different social groups and in different economic areas. The program, just like the previous sessions, consists of four webinars where we would be moving from general things to more specific ones. We will discuss those forms of housing, property, property management that we have in Ukraine, housing management. We will think about the needs that Ukraine has in terms of housing needs in different communities. And we will think about the role that housing policy plays in the development of communities. We will talk about how the situation has developed. We will understand what problems it poses in terms of management, modernization, building new housemen. We will hear about the case of Lithuania from Kaunas, and we'll think about how to integrate the principles of European Bauhaus to comprehensive projects Uh, to comprehensively improving the quality of life, how to manage uh, housing uh, policies, uh, and to get a comprehensive understanding of what housing costs are. We will listen to representatives of the Vienna municipality as to how municipal housing works in Vienna, and we'll understand what steps can be taken in order to uh, do it on a municipal level in Ukraine. At the last webinar, we will work with a very specific case to see how several municipal companies are already working in Ukraine and how to get initial funds for long-term funding of, of such municipal companies. In general, we have formed four groups of people who we think would be interested in that. Primarily, we're talking about the economy and a little bit less about municipal level of it, because the economy of this process and the role of housing in the economic development is critical. That's why representatives of economic departments and deputy mayors we would welcome them. Definitely, we are saying that the architects and spatial development, the architects who want to increase their competences and to better understand how to implement certain housing projects, we would also invite all of you to participate. And of course, the managers, people who want to work with uh, management of such housing companies and housing constructions, the, these are also very interesting targets audiences for us. In general, we have this kind of a complex of competences to understand why social housing exists in a community, how it affects other areas and the quality of life, a better understanding about how to study housing needs and whether and uh, why the housing policy is an important part of the community development and a practical experience of what municipal housing companies are, how they function and what values they create. And finally, the knowledge of those practices or those alternative models that are already working in Ukraine and abroad that can help us develop such projects or programs for housing development in specific programs communities. Thank you. And at the end, uh, let me tell you about how to become participants of the modules. As I have said it already, you can participate in all the modules, or you can choose one of them, or you can apply your community, can apply for different modules as part of different teams. In order to apply your request, your application, you have to get registered at the EU Academy platform. If you are together with us today, most probably you've already done it, but in order to apply for a certain module, each of your Part, each every participant of your team has to register one's profile and to apply individually for a module at the web program website or the module website. There you would find a small questionnaire after which the selection would be done. We have some technical limitations about the number of participants up to 100 participants for every module. We would ask you to confirm that you're ready to participate in all of the module. In other words, do all the tasks 
and be present at every event and activity and that you are ready to eventually present your uh, outputs at the end so in the case of uh, during our selection we can put some additional questions to you about your motivation why you want to participate in, and uh, what your plans are how you plan to use your knowledge in the future and, and after this process you will get a letter to your email with a confirmation that you are a participant of a module that you have been successful in selected and you would get all the details about how those classes and webinars will take place they will be also online webinars with the possibility to interact with the speakers and uh, those uh, classes will be quite active and interactive with the possibility to hear useful information and to share your experience and your ideas. So please join us. And the main criteria for selection for us would be a good balance between various complications and of course, the art modules, the art profiles. So we would be waiting for your applications. You can scan the QR codes in order to get to the right module page and to get registered, or you can do it later. This presentation will be sent to all the participants of today's webinar after the end of it, together with a, vi a video recording. And in terms of time frame, the modules uh, come one after the other. We will start the first module on April 6th. So we will be getting your applications until the 31st of March. The second module will start on the 1st of May. So we'll be receiving your applications until the 28th of April. And module three will start on June 1. So the applications can be received until May 26th. Now I suggest that we can answer the questions that we already see perhaps about the process of applying, about the content of the module. So if you have any questions, please read them, put them in the chat, or you can raise your hands. We already have a question about whether a team of a regional development agency can participate in these trainings. Well, I can start answering this question and my colleagues would catch up we have every module is quite specific so you can apply for some of the modules for a part of them for a regional development team it would probably module number one and number two be the best ones but probably module number three is more specific and probably targets more the communities and community development We also have a question about whether it is necessary to form teams or one can participate individually. Teams are a priority for us because we're interested in creating competences within your communities so that this knowledge can be disseminated. And the more people in your team will take these trainings, the easier it would be for you to in to implement these ideas it would be easier for you to understand one another to understand some basic principles so we would urge you to really form teams teams can consist of from two to six persons so this is quite a small team and i i'm sure that you will find in your communities like-minded people colleagues you can also have in your teams not all the representatives of the local authorities you can also have representatives of different organizations that cooperate with you municipal organizations civil society organizations depending on their profiles but they must be the ones who work on the future solutions for the communities and in fact there is one more question that is related 
to the participant profiles about whether if you represent a commercial company. If you are a partner of a municipality, yes. If you are an individual architect or urban planner, then uh, those modules, they target primarily municipalities. And yes, of course, you can create different tips for different modules according to the expertise. We are interested that the participants in the modules should fit into the module with their expertise. We have a question whether the materials of the modules will be available for the public after you finish the modules, but you won't have the chance to have the interactive activities. These will be just the recorded materials. Those participants who didn't have the chance to join, they will have the chance to see the modules. So the modules will become public after it is finished. As for the participants uh, of your teams, it's up to you to decide who should be in this team. We do not have any strict criteria. It should be up to you to form the team with which you will work further. We have a question whether the commercial organizations, NGOs, and the local authorities can participate. Yes, they can. If you collaborate with the local self-government authorities and if you are a part of the reconstruction process of Ukraine, a team from the NGO or a team from uh, business. No, you cannot, but only being a part of a team which collaborates with the municipalities, then yes, of course. Margot? I would like to give an example. For example, your agency has a contract with the municipality. You can suggest to the municipality to, to join one of our modules. And then it will be the outcome which we are seeking for. And then people would understand the link between the governments within the municipality and with the some company-based, business-based services. But you have some legal background, some uh, memorandum of understanding with the municipality or something like that. Yeah, it will be very important for the models of housing and the circular economy. Also, we have a number of questions whether the communities which are occupied right now can participate. We have uh, no restrictions on which uh, on, on the way how the communities are affected by the war because all the communities on the territory of ukraine suffered from the war in different ways some were damaged uh, in a heavier way some communities uh, do not have damages but they're occupied others are deoccupied also the communities in the Eastern and uh, in the central and western Ukraine may have no um, distractions, uh, but they could have issues with the IDPs. That's why all the communities are welcome, and uh, we are interested uh, in representing different communities. 
you have a question about further steps? What will be after this project? What are the other bonuses? This project is aimed to increase the capacity and our function is to development of knowledge and supporting you in developing skills. So you will have some project developments in different modules. That is the introductory program. It will allow you to get to know the topics, but you won't become an expert win for webinars. That's why you should be quite cautious. But if you are fulfilling very successfully the program, you receive a certificate about the module. Every uh, module has 0 0.5 credits. So you have the real proof on your upskilling. There are also a number of questions which I can answer during the further presentations or you will receive the answers in the letter which you will receive after the today's meeting. And now I would like to pass the floor to the colleague who will tell about further possibilities after this program. And where you could also apply after this program in order to implement your projects. Thank you very much, Margot. And uh, thank you to all colleagues. We've um, really covered a lot of ground by now, um, but there's still a few really, really important things to talk about, which I think everyone will be really interested in, in the uh, 25 minutes that are left to us. And specifically, we can talk about uh, what happens uh, after the program and also um, how we see the role of not only municipalities, but also maybe some uh, some other participants in the program. And so for to discuss these things, um, we will do it with two colleagues who have just uh, joined me on the virtual stage. Um, one of them is Ruth Reichstein, who works very closely with the president of the European Commission and advises her on a number of important issues, including the new European Bauhaus. And the other colleague is Marlene Matzen, who um, works in the department of the European Commission that is dealing with our neighborhood uh, countries, with our, with our neighbors, and specifically uh, working at the moment on, uh, on Ukraine, an absolutely key partner. And of course, uh, we very much expect a future member state as well. And to, uh, to start with, um, maybe I'll start with a pretty easy question so that we have um, a minute of a uh, slightly softer landing into this uh, new topic of discussion. Maybe a, to a question to Ruth, because you work very closely with, uh, with the president of the European Commission. How, um, how does she sees, see this project? Why is it so important to her? Well, thanks a lot, Annabelle, and uh, good afternoon to all of you. I mean, I must say, personally, I'm very impressed after this one and a half hour um, webinar. Uh, so many people um, and so many uh, interesting interventions. Uh, it's really, it's really great, and I think that really shows that there is such a huge need, but also potential, you know, for good partnership and cooperation um, for the reconstruction and rebuilding of Ukraine. And I mean, I think you all know that it is a priority for the president. Um, it is really amazing to see how she's also personally involved in um, in 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 this um, in this whole question about Ukraine. Obviously, she is dealing mainly on a much higher level, you know, with um, where to get the money from, uh, how to get more financial or military support for Ukraine, and all these things. But um, at the same time, the new European Bauhaus is also one of the projects that the president really likes a lot because for her, it's clear that you cannot progress in the society, you cannot make changes in society if you try to impose it 
or if you try to solve things only through you know technology or complicated technical things you also need to bring the people along and there the European Bauhaus comes in because for us it's important as it was now explained several times that we combine sustainability with the social question that we not only look at okay how energy efficient is a building but we also look at are the people actually feeling well inside the building and is that actually something they can be proud of and they can also care about and these are the things that we would really like to uh, bring in a certain manner also in this um, reconstruction process and um, yeah I mean you heard the president in the beginning um, in the video and she will for sure continue to uh, follow very closely um, what is happening in this project and continue her support um, as she does on many levels um, for Ukraine in general every day. Thank you very much, Ruth. And it's, this is really great to hear. And it's a bit of a shot of energy that we need for the last stretch of, um, of today's webinar. And now going a bit more in, in depth on a kind of more operational um, level. Marlene, you work very uh, intensively, of course, on our cooperation with, uh, with Ukraine. And you have a very good idea of what uh, how we can cooperate on reconstruction. Uh, but of course, in the audience today, or rather as participants, uh, we have a lot of uh, di very different stakeholders. And to start with, definitely many, many colleagues from municipalities. So how do you see the role of municipalities in the reconstruction and the partnership that we can have uh, also with them? Yeah, thank you very much for this question and for inviting me to participate in this very, very important event you have here today. I can only second uh, the, the words of Ruth in the sense of being very impressed with the large number of participants, but also participants at all levels. And I think that's really what is crucial here. Where we have both uh, commissioners, ministers, we have local authorities, we have all parts engaged in, in delivering on this very, very important agenda. Uh, Ruth mentioned the great importance the president is attaching to the new European Bauhaus, but also to the, uh, the support to Ukraine. Uh, one additional element here, I would say, is that um, the new European Bauhaus was created by uh, Commissioner Gabriel and Commissioner Ferreira. And I think that also illustrates a bit the answer to your question because it was the commissioner in charge of exactly uh, the, the research innovation, but also the commissioner in charge of cohesion, because it's all along from, the, from day one that we have been uh, working on this new European Bauhaus. The focus has always been on the great importance of the regional and the local level. And that is whether it's inside Europe, whether it's at the international level where we are engaging as well, or whether when it comes to the reconstruction of Ukraine. This can, agenda can only be delivered if it's also coming from bottom up, if it's also engaging with the local uh, stakeholders and not, not least both regional, local level and the local authorities. So this is something that has been fundamental all along and certainly also will be so uh, in Ukraine. Um, and it's, it's for Ukraine, it's really uh, the double importance in the sense that uh, the new European Bauhaus can only be delivered uh, with engagement of the local stakeholders, but also the reconstruction of Ukraine can only be delivered with the engagement of the local stakeholders. So we have all the, uh, the focus and the emphasis on, on ensuring our engagement uh, here, and, and therefore they also play a crucial role. Uh, it is, it's absolutely vital. It's them who have the knowledge, the local knowledge of what and where the most urgent needs are, but both when it comes to the, to the, the work and the investments. Um, I think it was also emphasized quite clearly by the Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Restoration earlier on in his intervention. Uh, and I think it's, it's something that as far as, as I've understood has been uh, uh, mentioned uh, uh, by many different stakeholders today. Now we are working intensively with all the international partners uh, we are engaging with for the reconstruction of, of Ukraine uh, and the Ukrainian authorities on ensuring uh, a coherent plan and, and for the reconstruction of Ukraine. And in that one, certainly this will be an element 
it's still early days, so it's not like we can give you any concrete firm answers today of neither uh, scale or, or, or exactly, you know, decisions on when calls will be made. But EU funding uh, will be implemented via the IFIs with whom the municipalities will, will be working with. Um, the Covenant of Mayors has been one of the most successful EU funded initiatives in the Eastern Partnership and by far more successful in Ukraine than in any other countries in the Eastern Partnership. So we are glad that they are already working uh, on the, the new European powerhouse in the Ukrainian municipalities to, to further strengthen uh, their capacities for reconstruction efforts, which will be huge. Thanks a lot, Marlene. That's, that's, really, that's really great to hear. And um, in fact, uh, that's uh, exactly the spirit of this capacity building project and also opening it to, uh, to many different stakeholders. Perhaps, uh, Ruth, would you like to complete um, what Marlene said, maybe also mentioning uh, how other stakeholders and municipalities um, can get involved? Yes, sure. Um, so, well, first of all, um, these first three modules, we hope that they are a pilot project and that we can then, based on what we learn also during these three modules, um, continue with um, follow up projects. Because, I mean, for us, it was very important that this capacity building is actually based on the real needs on the ground. That's why we had a whole Im assessment before, you know, of the needs of the um, Ukrainian municipalities together with our Ukrainian partners. And this is also what we would like to do now. We try these first three modules and then we see how to continue. So it might be that then we say, okay, let's, you know, do that again, but with other municipalities. But it might also be that we say, look, these were um, first three topics, but we need now to continue with other topics um, and so on. So this is, these are things that we will look at for the capacity building. Then, um, and the question was already a bit uh, asked earlier in, in Margot's uh, Q&A session, for those who cannot participate in the capacity building, because indeed we decided to really focus first on the municipalities, also to give you know, all of you there, a safe environment to really discuss openly and to really go into depth and to also put maybe some issues and problems on the table. That's why it was important for us to have, first of all, really this, this, this first target group of municipalities and have people there that trust each other and can work well together. But then obviously we want to make all the material um, also available for all. And as Margot has mentioned, they will be available at the EU Academy website, um, and you can watch them back and, um, and, and you can also take your learnings from there. In addition, what we um, have decided that at the end of each of the three modules, we will also have one open module again, a bit like today, but obviously much more content driven and not so much, uh, you know, nice uh, political interventions. And there, this will be open for all of you and you can then also um, stay, uh, stay tuned and see um, what we do. And um, um, and then um, we have also quite some other ideas what we what we might want to do in the future. So I don't know, Adelbert, if you want me to mention them already or if I should keep them for, uh, I don't know, the, the later stage. I continue? Okay, good. It will not be long, but as the funding was already mentioned also by Marlene, um, we have uh, in the European Bauhaus, uh, it's, a, it's a very small um, project uh, and program on the big scale of European funding. But we will have in April, and Commissioner Sinkiewicz mentioned that in the beginning. So in April, we will have three calls um, that will be opened, and they will be open also for Ukrainian um, uh, organizations. One is capacity building um, for waste management. Another one is a call for capacity building for water management, and always also linked to this construct reconstruction um, question. So there you can have a look, you can apply. And we will also have one more open call um, on a new European Bauhaus where um, you can have a look and see um, what might be projects that might fit. All this is in the LIFE program. That's uh, the European Commission's program on environment as the commissioner has explained earlier. So this will be something that will be coming probably mid-April and we will also inform on, on the website of the new European Bauhaus. 
Then in addition to that, um, the new European Bauhaus has also quite some calls in uh, the research program that we have, research and innovation, which is called Horizon. And we are, this is also open uh, to Ukrainian um, organizations. And there it will be different calls over the next two years, um, for example, also on um, cultural heritage and new European Bauhaus, which can be interesting maybe for some of you. Another one on um, sustainable construction, use of sustainable building materials, for example. So um, all these things, you find them also on the new European Bauhaus website. And I think it would be really um, um, interesting to look there and to see if something can match with, with, with what you want to do and maybe can help you. Um, and then uh, just as uh, two more uh, points, uh, another thing that we would like to organize also together with our colleagues from, um, from who are working on the environment and the commissioner is to see if we cannot uh, organize a special trip, let's say, on um, circularity together with um, actors from the European Union, so companies, but also other organizations who work on circularity um, and uh, reconstruction. I mean, you have heard already uh, before, so for example, concrete from the destroyed buildings can be, in certain cases, recycled and reused, and they are European companies working on this. So we would like to come uh, and to see if some technology can be brought to Ukraine and also see what are the what is the potential in Ukraine to work with these kind of technologies. And then last but not least, um, we also hope, uh, and that is not a promise because we don't know yet if it will work out, but this is something that um, we, uh, we are working on at the moment. We also hope that we can then um, uh, see from the in the capacity building if there are certain concrete projects and I just take the easy example of a school in a municipality you know that needs to be rebuilt that we can then find kind of couples of Ukrainian and architects from uh, the European Union who can work together on such a project who can donate it in a way to the municipality and that then this can be um, implemented so these are things that we are currently looking at and we really hope that um, these first three modules will not be a one-shot thing, but that it will only be the start of a longer and further cooperation um, together um, for the rebuilding of Ukraine. Thank you very much, Ruth. So now we've heard a lot about the program, what, um, what the, what, how to be part of the program, and also what uh, happens next in the framework of the new European Bauhaus. But beyond uh, only as it were, the new European Bauhaus, and um, looking more and more more broadly into the Commission's um, support and partnership with Ukraine on reconstruction, um, what are the further opportunities that uh, that uh, exist here, and how can the work of the new European Bauhaus fit into this broader work? Uh, Marlene, could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, absolutely. I will. I will certainly try. Um... I think uh, for, for how it will fit into the broader work, we'll have to, to remember, first of all, um, the, the fact that Ukraine has um, uh, applied for EU member state in February 2022 and was granted candidate status on the 23rd of June 2022, following the Commission's opinion on Ukraine's application for membership uh, and the enlargement process has been and continues to be uh, of essential importance in facilitating and promoting a reform momentum in Ukraine. Uh, the candidate status of Ukraine implies that the choice of the regulatory regime uh, defined by the UAE key will frame the recovery and re reconstruction process of the country. And this will further facilitate the reconstruction efforts, which should be in line with the European Green and Digital Agenda. Um, and also just to, to so, so it will be key in all the reconstruction efforts uh, uh, and recovery efforts that the European Commission is engaging with, with um, Ukraine. Uh, I think you can also say, I mean, the importance for the European Union in helping Ukraine, uh, let alone the, the, the response we've had from, from day one and the support we've given from day one, which uh, by this point in time is around 67 billion euros. Um, but also you can say it's the only country uh, at all that has an entire directorate in the European Commission, uh, namely here in Digenia. 
so that I think emphasizes both uh, the huge importance from the European Commission, but also the fact that all our work will be linked to the whole enlargement process. Uh, of And here, the new European Bauhaus is an important part of the European uh, policies and efforts in ensuring social inclusion, ensuring high energy efficiency and environmental standards, and ensuring high degree of aesthetics will fit perfectly in the overall direction for the reconstruction of Ukraine. And even more fit, as I mentioned, with the objectives of the Green Deal for the EU, and now also for Ukraine because of this uh, status. Uh, so the objective to build and rebuild Ukrainian cities and infrastructure better than they were before the war, the war is absolutely uh, the key focus of our efforts. Um, it's also key if, uh, part of our efforts, for instance, when we are working with World Bank in identifying the needs for the uh, for the for the repair of the uh, of the of Ukraine in the sense that we have ensured that also there the build back better component is strongly reflected. So we are we are having it very much integrated in all the efforts we're doing in working with Ukraine and with international stakeholders. And as EU has been appointed as the coordinator it will be in, implemented in all efforts, not just from the European Union, but also from international donors. It will be a very important element. We already have a number of ongoing and planned uh, pro programs to help with reconstruction. Uh, Ruth also mentioned uh, uh, some work uh, here in this area. And we have, for instance, uh, a rev revised 300 million euro for renovation of public buildings implemented by EIB. And we've similarly a uh, repurposed program uh, implemented by NEFCO, uh, 25 million euro programs by IFC for adaptation of all buildings, public buildings to host IDPs, program of quick repairs in the housing sector, et cetera. This is just very quickly to mention, it is there in, in our work that we have in, in, in uh, helping uh, reconstructing uh, the the the, the both the economy, but also uh, the, the housing, the, the infrastructure, etc. The, in Ukraine. And there will be much more. It will be a key element uh, going forward in all our efforts. The new Euro European Bauhaus Society uh, will be uh, also having a, a key role to play in this, as I already emphasized also in my, my, my previous question. And it will require getting into a dialogue and closer cooperation with the Ukrainian uh, counterparts at both central and local level, uh, as also mentioned earlier. So it, it is, in short, uh, completely integrated in, in all of the work that we will have going forward. Marlene, Ruth, thank you ever so much. And um, I think that that has given us really a very, um, uh, very clear picture of what uh, opportunities will be available next. So also an additional incentive, perhaps, for everyone to get really involved in uh, in our capacity building program, which is really shaping up um, very, very well. Ruth and Marlene were our last uh, speakers for today, and it's, um, I think, good in some ways, even though I've really enjoyed the event, because we've uh, we've got lots and lots of information that we will still need to digest. Um, just to close the event, I think we, um, I would like to have uh, Margot with me on the stage, if that's possible. And, um, oh, hello, Margot. Uh, and maybe just to say that we, of Dan. course, have seen... Um, we, we, of course, have seen all the questions that you have asked in uh, in the chat. And uh, as Margot has emphasized, we will uh, make sure that you all get uh, replies to these. And um, from my side, uh, just as closing words, I think um, I've been very, very impressed with uh, what I heard today. Um, I think some of these, some of the things that uh, that we've heard will still need to digest and really go much more in depth. Uh, as regards um, all the different strands of action that municipalities and other actors need to um, need to work on uh, for for reconstruction, but definitely what has become very clear is that there are a lot of partners uh, that we uh, have assembled for this capacity building uh, program that take this work extremely extremely seriously and that are very 
um, very much engaged in it and who will certainly bring an enormous amount of value into the courses themselves. And that also, um, what I found very encouraging is that um, together with our partners, I think we've managed to insert this uh, capacity building program into the wider efforts on reconstruction of Ukraine, um, or at least our support for it from the European Commission side, that um, will enable us to um, uh, to really bring good, give a good follow up to all the um, all the actions that will be identified there. So I'm really, really encouraged by by what I heard. Margot, what about you? Uh, yes, I would like to join all the words of thanks to our speakers and to our participants. And we are really happy that you joined us today and then you ask your questions. We were trying to answer all the questions. Maybe I have to react to some last question which we received in the chat about the cultural heritage it's one of the next steps this program will not be linked with heritage but we uh, we have this comprehensive approach that's why we cannot exclude uh, any topic we have to have a comprehensive approach to have a strategic view that's why in all our steps we will have uh, to collaborate and we are very happy that today uh, during this meeting we saw a lot of questions and also answers uh, from the communities and in our chat we had uh, the request whether we can participate if we are not in the community and then the answers we are a community and we are interested in collaboration and that's uh, really exciting because it gives the possibility to unite our efforts and that's critical and to share knowledge not only from the experts to the communities but backwards and within the communities there because you have your experience you have your capacities and you have your own practices and also your experience which you gain through your both uh, losses and victories. And with all this, we are coming closer to the victory and to the reconstruction. So that's why I'm very thankful to everyone who was sharing your ideas, your thoughts. And after this meeting, we will share all the materials which we have and the registration for the modules is already open and the confirmation will be sent in a week. Thanks again to everyone. And we fit into our time schedule. Thank you very much to everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye to everyone. That's the end of our webinar.